everyone. So I've been working from home as a data scientist literally since March, 2020. It's been almost three years. I had basically seven months since I graduated where I actually had to go into work. In these three years, I moved cross country. I lived in Tampa. I moved from Tampa to Dallas. Then I bought a place in Chicago and I moved from Dallas to Chicago. And let me tell you, working from home, the flexibility is absolutely amazing in the beginning. I basically started my career just working from home and it was awesome. I just woke up, rolled out of bed and went to work. But now after three years of doing this, I honestly feel like a zombie. At this point, working from home is honestly harder than going into work. This is for my situation only, maybe some of you, but if you are one of those people that completely understands where I'm coming from and just are here to commiserate, or you're someone who's trying to consider whether you should work from home or not, we're gonna hit on the lack of career progression because people need to talk about how it's hard to get visibility when you're just behind a screen. I also wanna talk about my work from home setup. Your environment is so important. It makes you feel professional or not professional, puts you in the mood to get work done or not. It's so important. And I'm also gonna talk about how to set up like a system of accountability for yourself because if you're just working from home, sometimes it's really easy to just days off for like honestly weeks on end and just feel like none of this matters, but like it matters. It is your career. Let's go straight into talking about the lack of career progression though, because as like a 21 year old who was given the opportunity to roll out of bed and go to work, I thought that was awesome. But then you have to remember that like people basically get lost in the model of working from home, whether they have like a family to take care of, their pets or whatever, they're just not motivated. If you feel that way, I am telling you, your manager and the other people on your team feel the same way too. So it's not just dependent on your motivation when you're working from home to get visibility it's also dependent on other people's motivation. And sometimes people just like don't know what you're doing either. Like your work gets lost in the ether when you're just working from home at a laptop. While some people may like being part of the ether and just, you know, not being checked in on as much, it's really important to communicate all of your findings, your projects, your challenges, like communicating all of this to your manager, leadership, your teammates is really important and you have to put in effort. If you take anything away from this video, just take away that you have to put in a lot of effort into giving visibility to yourself if you work from home because no one else is gonna give visibility to you, it has to be you. Getting to know your manager, getting to know your teammates and getting to know leadership on a more intimate level, all of this is on you as a data scientist or whatever you are working as. And my solution to this throughout the years, yes, I do have, I have a solution. I'm telling you, this has worked for me. I've gotten promoted, my salary basically doubled like over the time like it's been well and I feel like my career has been progressing the biggest thing is documentation is key I go through ridiculous bouts of documentation at times because I own my own projects end to end. I'm a senior data scientist now. And at times I have to source my own projects and figure out what is best for this startup at this stage for marketing analytics. For that, documentation is my holy grail. I have so many resources to point people to when someone's like, hey, isn't Priya working on that? I'm gonna send them five links of very detailed notes on all the features my model includes, why I chose those features, the timeline of development for those features, features, the results, the outcomes, like literally everything. The first thing that I think is the most important, so I create a development timeline to document literally everything I'm doing. This is what it looks like and it's kind of almost like the crisp DM framework if you've ever heard of it. I think creating a timeline like this where you have all of the weeks listed and the different like project breakdown buckets such as data gathering, data exploration, data prep, going into model development, including explainability for model development because your ML models only as good as you can explain the outcome, right? This entire timeline, I have like over three weeks of dev work documented in this one grid. It has changed the way I work. And I even throughout my process of development, I actually go on Google Meets and I take videos of myself like going through the work. I just screen record myself and I share that out with my stakeholders and my team to show them the development of the features as it's going on. So every month I have like a new update via a demo. And I link all of that in this development matrix as well. This is just one of the ways that I make sure that like, people understand my value at the company and that I'm not really losing on my career progression by having the flexibility of working from home. Another thing I do is create a feature scoping document. I talk about the features, sub features, explanations, user stories, whether I'm in charge of this or whether my business intelligence analyst counterparts are in charge of this. I talk about the effort, whether I need help from the team, current availability, and also the impact this is going to have on the total product that we're going to either sell or use internally. Just because you're working from home, 
and just because you might not meet your manager every day or every week doesn't mean you can't put in extra effort, show people what you're doing. It's really, really important to advocate for your work because that is the only way you will stand out in a remote first work environment. Now that I got through all the hard stuff that everyone just needs to know if you work from home and hopefully I gave you some suggestions that will work for you in your career, let's go into the fun stuff. Work from home setup. So I want to thank FlexiSpot for sponsoring this portion of the video and honestly for making my desk setup so convenient. I live in a 1,000 square foot condo in Chicago. I'm not there right now. I'm visiting my parents for Thanksgiving, but a thousand square feet. I work in my living room basically. And I just upgraded my setup to FlexiSpot's new desk. I got the FlexiSpot EB8 standing desk and it's like a wooden bamboo texture. It is so cute and really, really sleek. It's so quiet. My cat literally sits on my desk and I could move it up and down and she doesn't even hear it. And my favorite is honestly the fact that it has the USB and USB-C charging points it makes it so accessible just to do things it's clean like there's no more clutter like I used to have this desk was honestly like such a big upgrade and it's really cute but it's not just cute like it's just so functional and quiet honestly the assembly took me like 15 minutes because this entire top part and this entire bottom part they're actually like came together my monitor is pretty old I use a laptop stand though for ergonomic reasons but it's as simple as can be honestly I just want my work setup to be as simple simple as possible, just have the stuff I need. It's very important to curate your entire work environment the way you want it to look and be as clutter free as possible. Now let's talk about like the accountability or the lack of accountability when you work from home, like you just take a nap in the afternoon, no one's gonna know. Who's gonna know? Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. But because of that like option to just kind of like slack off more than you would if you were at work, accountability is really important. So the two things that I think everyone should do, the first one, as part of your accountability structure, you need to have like meetings strategically placed on your calendar, okay? You need to have one-on-ones with your manager and you need to be friends with your manager. If that's possible, you need to just have like a good rapport with your manager because for me, your manager is the one that decides on your promotions. And for me, that's been the biggest difference like since I joined Drizzly think of it as like a fun like jovial environment where you talk about your goals and stuff but you also just like get to know other people that's like the best way to get further I think when you're working from home to cultivate human connection and the second thing I really think when you're trying to cultivate accountability for yourself you need to have like a daily checklist so the first thing I would say you need to have like a daily checklist or scrum or something I have scrum daily where I get to go and talk about what I'm doing for the day what I did yesterday blockers all within a minute but if you you don't have a meeting like that figure out some sort of accountability where like you know in your development timeline you update what you do for that week and the second just know what your personal goals are like all of this at the end of the day like if you don't care about career progression you're fine where you are none of this matters like this video doesn't matter I'm assuming you want to get further you want to learn more you want to be happier with your work life and for that you need to know what your personal goals are and communicate that with your team if you want to get a promotion let everyone know that and work towards it now we're gonna just like like hit on like what I do as like a person and like to have a social life because if I am home like half of the day every day I also would like to have a life and be happy because your work is only as good as like how you feel about yourself I think I think like a morning routine just like for me going outdoors is so important I listen to the Huberman lab podcast it is so good there's a whole podcast episode about sleep I'm gonna link it here sometimes in the Chicago winter it's hard like yeah, it's hard, but like whether it's for like your coffee run, you have a reason to get up in the morning and go out. Like your $5 Starbucks is worth it if it helps your mental health. I also moved back to Chicago and all my friends are here. So it's very easy to like schedule happy hours or I know I'm gonna see them on the weekend or just like scheduling all of these things. Cause like I moved back to the city where I went to like university, right? So a lot of my friends are here. So it's not as bad, I actually really enjoy it. I have a cat also, she's always with me. I am never alone because I always have my cat around me. She's always cuddling and I think it's really important to be intentional about your PTO. So I actually have unlimited PTO. I take at least a week off every quarter because I think you can only be productive if you're like actually enjoying your work. I took two weeks off in September, went to Italy and Greece, got to travel, didn't even think about work one of those 14 days. And that really helped me like get back into the swing of things and like create all of this work that's going to be valuable for the company. And I know that like my PTO is a little crazy, like they treat us really well. But if you don't have unlimited PTO, I think being conscious about how you choose to spend your weekends or take like certain days off when you know you need it that's really important so 
I think this is what it is like to be a data scientist who works from home. It's awesome to have flexibility. I get to travel. I get to spend all of my time with my cat, but also it's hard and you have to have accountability for yourself. You have to put your work out there and you have to document your work, especially as a technical person, m way more than you ever would think. And that's how you get far. Like I've seen people be stuck for so long in the same role and the same, like almost like the same environment, not progressing because because like no one knows what they're doing or they're not communicating effectively and that sucks. So communicate and document your work. I guess that's the last thing I'm gonna say. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, like the video and I will see you guys at the next one.